Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator. I have my guest, Fred D'Amico, and he is going to be talking about just the industry, Hollywood uh, permitting offices, the city of Youngstown, a local community that he's been working in, and some stuff he's been doing across the United States, you know, in California, some other states. So, Fred, how you doing? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Good, Brian. Um, well, I'm originally from Youngstown. Yeah. I left in 1996 to go to Hollywood. Oh, okay. And uh, joined the industry out there. Uh, coming from this town, I had a background in acting uh, throughout high school and then down at college as well. And then uh, I decided to just pursue my dreams uh, of going out to Hollywood and being in the movie industry. Um, and that, that was a very smart choice of mine to follow my yeah. passion. Now, now your family, your father was in there, was he? The, uh, no, my, 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 my parents were here in town. They sold real estate. Oh, that was it. My mom was a singer, dancer, and the Warner Brothers actually asked her to come out there when they left, and yeah. my grandpa wouldn't let her go. So, so you came, you came back to uh, Youngstown, and uh, you you saw an opportunity. Tell us a little bit about I what you. I didn't see an opportunity actually, seen. Brian. When I when I came back to Youngstown after being out there for what 16, 17 years, and I actually produced a movie. That's what brought me home was that, you know, it, it was a choice I made. Uh, when I was producing the movie, we were gonna shoot it in Louisiana. Uh, it's a, it was about a $4 million movie with Christopher Walken, oh, okay. Christian Slater, Anthony Anderson, yeah. Juvenile, uh, Moon Blood Good, Larry King. And it's called The Power of Few. Yeah. And we shot in Louisiana. And then after the movie was over, it was uh, December time and we were, everyone's going back to LA, but I, I, I went home. And I stayed home for Christmas, and then I didn't go back. I had moved out, and my mom's like wondering, why are you home? I said, well, Mom. Yeah, yeah. So I'm back, because my dad passed, and I left there. I told her I'll be back one day, Mom. I'm going to go be in the movies. I'll be back. And I, I had no excuse at that point in time not to come home. I've already done what I wanted to do out there. Now, now I should have stayed and continued my, my career there. Yeah. But I really wanted to be with my mom. Yeah. And uh, have a family here, not in L.A., really. Uh, but when I got home, there was no opportunities in Youngstown, kind of like they are today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no opportunities here. So mostly your politician's fault. Uh, the other is just the mindset of the people that you just can't change. You guys build cards here, don't you? Yeah, well, you, yeah. You say you do, yeah, but you yeah, don't. Like, how yeah. many people really work at GM? Well, quite yeah. a few, but where's GM? Yeah. It doesn't exist yeah, anymore. Yeah. Um, when I came home, my parents sold real estate. I sold in 1990. Two, three, four. I sold real estate. Uh huh. But when I left in '96, a four-bedroom house in Borden was a hundred grand. When I came back in 2011, it was a hundred grand. Yeah. Nothing changed Nothing here. Changed. If Nothing anything, changed. it went down. And I know things changed in the past couple of years. Everyone got excited when these housing went up. But I just said you you went through a readjustment, Nuns Yeah. You've been the same way for over 20 some years. All you did is just readjust yeah. a little. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But why do the youth stay here? Why? Why is anyone moving here? Why is anyone sticking around here? Uh -huh. Oh, family, family, yeah. of course. Okay, but besides family, which there's nothing beside family supposedly, but let's just say your youth leave. My kids, I'm going to tell them, you go be whoever you got to be and you go do what you got to do and you yeah, get out of this town. Yeah, yeah. This town is what we call the slow death. You move here, you live here. Yeah. You don't realize it, but there's nothing going on in this town. Yeah. We try to make things happen. We try to Not get together. Yeah. We try to say revitalization with what? More bars? Yeah. More yeah. alcohol? Yeah. So it's not real right revitalization. And then yeah. the other revitalization they've been saying, tearing down houses? Yeah. Uh, my broker, uh, you know, we take a look at this land around here. You got your neighborhoods that are completely vacant, and then there's a house, and then three more lots, and then another house, three more lots, and another house. You, you, you've vulturized your neighborhoods for money here. Yeah. Because you get 50 grand per house, you tear down. Yeah. So that was your way of making money, Youngstown, and um, just the whole region in general. So when I came home, I called my producing partners, and I had a movie called Buds, and we were going to bring it here. And uh, my partners were like, well, who in your town knows how to work on a movie? Yeah. Where's your equipment, Fred? Yeah. I mean, you say it's cheaper because it's cheaper in Youngstown, they say. Yeah. It's not. Youngstown, you got to understand. When you say your cost of living is cheaper, you got to be real. Say it one more time. Cost of living. Yeah, cost of living. There you go. You're giving up life. You're giving up life to live in this godforsaken town that has nothing to offer you. So the question is, the world's thriving around you, Youngstown. Uh -huh. But here you are sitting here 
and there's Cleveland, and there's Pittsburgh, and everywhere else, thriving, 50 miles yeah, from Cincinnati you. Cincinnati, too. Cincinnati. Well, yeah, but even just in 50 miles, you got Cleveland yeah, and Pittsburgh. Yeah. 50 miles thriving. What are you doing, Youngstown? You're dying, yeah. surviving, asking the state to help you. And that's because we have a real issue with, um, like I said, the politicians, but more so, it's the belief factor that we could change who we were as a people here. Yeah. Hard working, tough working. What you're going to the bars, you're law, what? Yeah, yeah. What do you do here? Grass cutting construction? Uh huh. That's about it. School. Well, what else are we doing here? Yeah. Your YSU is not gonna save this area or keep the youth here. Um, I don't see anything to keep the youth here. And I was gonna try to bring this business home, but my partners were like, You have nothing set up. Yeah. Why don't you set things up first? Then we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it. Yeah. Because in order to come to Youngstown, Fred, I'm gonna have to hire people that know how to work on movies, right? Yeah. Where are they gonna stay? They have to stay at a hotel. So it's gonna cost me money to bring them in, cost me money to keep them here. Where's your equipment? I'm gonna have to bring it in from Cleveland, bring it yeah. in from, yeah. get it set up and then we can come. Yeah. So my goal was to take a look at Pittsburgh and Cleveland and say, what do they have? How do they do this? What do they got? And design it, well, first of all, a film commission. Well, I went to your county commissioners, Mahoney County, uh, to start. Yeah, yeah. And that's because back in the day you have Anthony Traficani, who still is your commission, which is the sickness of our mindset here. Yeah. Let's just put this in perspective. It's a four year seat. Uh -huh. Brian, if you won, congratulations. Four years later, you got to run again, right? Yeah. You win again. Congratulations. But back up. 2004, you were the commissioner. Yeah. What year is it now? 2024. And this guy's still, still the commissioner? <laughs> there's some funny business going on They've been saying that here. for quite a while. Yeah, there's yeah. some funny business. You know what else it is? It's that the Mahoney County Republican Party is actually, there's a rat inside of that Republican Party that's been there for a while, which they do not put anyone against this man, tra Traficani. Uh -huh. Nobody. There's nobody yeah. running against him again. You got, yeah. how many people? That's the one seat you need to vacate is yeah. that man right there. Yeah. Well, I back up. I look at this man, and he funded the last film commission in 2004 from the county bed tax. Yeah, yeah. So I came home, and we had a conversation. He said, no, we're not doing this again. Now, now wait a minute. Excuse me. I, I, I let it be known. I'm not here to work for you. Okay, that's number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, you want to. I don't want to yeah. work for you. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know my employer. Yeah. I said, my dream is to have a film commission here. I said two things. Number one, you're going to have one here whether you like it or not. Question is, Mahoney County, what do you want to add? Because you don't control it this time. Yeah. Last time they controlled the film commission here. They gave bed tax money. And it wasn't because they were a real film office. It's because they had a friend of theirs that or, they wanted yeah. to win a county seat as commissioner. So they thought, well, how do we get this guy known to the public? Well, Bob Wasco, a man on your board of elections, came up with this idea with Traffic County on the commissioner's board trying to get this guy named Richard Orzonian. They called him Oz, the man behind yeah, the curtain, right? Yeah, yeah. So they funded this film commission only to have him put out in the papers as the big film commissioner. But then he's running for county commissioner. So now you'd know him. Yeah. But he lost. He didn't win. Yeah. When he lost, he tried coming back into the county asking for 150000 more. And the CDB was ran by a lady by the name of uh, Billy Joe Boris. And Billy Joe said, no, we're not funding this. This is not a real office. Yeah. Got in a fight with Traffic County, literally on the streets. Closed down the CVB and gave $12 million out to every nonprofit in this area. Wow. Traffic and them came back in, reorganized the CVB board, and boom, they control the CVB from the county now. Except there's no film commission. Because there's no one in this town that is capable, able, willing to yeah. bring movies home or to be a film commission here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even this guy, uh, Boom Boom Mancini, which everyone loves to throw his name out yeah. there when it comes to movies. Yeah. Excuse me, but. I say, boom, boom, what do you think about? Boxing. Thank you. Okay, let's keep it in the ring, the right ring. Ray likes to say that he was a boxer, act, wait, he was an actor his whole life acting like a boxer. Yeah. Well, you don't step into rings with people as an actor. If you're in the yeah. boxing. You're a boxer. You're a boxer. You know what to do and <laughs> yeah. when to stop. Makes sense. When to, not using too much force, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Let's say lay off a little bit. Yeah. You're going to hurt the guy a little yeah. too much, maybe. Yeah. If you're an actor, you're getting in that ring as a boxer. You're going to, oh, I'm just going to kill him. Yeah. Which we all know happened, too. Yeah. I'm not saying that you did that on purpose. Uh-huh. But sometimes when you're acting like something you're not. Yeah. Yeah, that's, but that's not the case. He knew what he case. was doing. He's a boxer. He's a professional boxer. He's not an actor. He's a boxer that would like to be an actor. Yeah. I believe people want to be actors, but I'm an actor. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. I don't want to be an actor, 
You're an actor. I'm an actor. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah, you know the business. You look great. You should be an actor. That does not equate to being an actor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're famous because you're a boxer. You should be an actor now. That does not equate to use your fame as a boxer to become an actor. Okay. But when your career's over, and, and this is something that came to me, it's a short fall from the limo to the curb. So when you're on the top of your game as, let's say, a boxer, world champ, uh -huh. you're no longer world champ anymore. There's the curb, buddy. Yeah. How are you going to get back in the limo? Yeah, yeah. You start boxing again, you're done. That's it. So you go to movies. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Point being is, who in this town is going to bring you movies? Who wants to bring movies to this town? Who wants to bring movies to this town? Besides actors and actresses that would love the opportunities, uh -huh. or construction workers, or hair and makeup people, or directors that would like to, or not deep directors, because I'm yeah. sorry, but when I bring movies home from Hollywood, we are hiring crew. We're not hiring writers, directors, and producers, okay? Yeah, yeah. We have that. They're coming with the money to give you people here if you know how to work on the movie sets. Yeah. yeah. But there's the positions below the line that will be filled here. Um, acting, you know, preying upon people's dreams to be in movies and stuff. That's great and all. The truth is there's very small roles in a movie to be given out. To everyday people. Yeah, yeah. The larger roles are given to the agencies and the actors that are going to bring you money yeah. when you go to foreign distribution. Yeah, yeah. Nobody knows Fred D'Amico versus Christopher Walken. Uh -huh. So you're going to put Mr. Walken in your movie yeah. and it's going to sell worldwide. Yeah. You know, Ray Mancini, you don't put him in your movie. Yeah. The world, they know him, but they don't know him as an actor. Yeah. He's a big actor, a star. He's not a star. Yeah. Will Smith, sure. No. Put him in your movie. He's yeah. a star. But, Brian, you're not a star. I'm not a star. I throw you in the movie. Nobody in France is going to buy that movie for the price I want yeah, them to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the point being is you put people in your movies. And when you do that, sometimes the agencies say, you want Mr. Walken, you're going to take so-and-so and so-and-so with him. Well, now you got three roles going to basically one agency for one part. Because now they've demanded that you get these other roles. So those 15 characters in your movie, they start chipping down as you're going through. So then the, the whole casting call of Hollywood, people lined up on the streets for this bit role of being the bartender or something. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. 65,000 people for one little role, yeah. one little one. But that's just to keep the industry going, I believe. Yeah. Because the truth is on the producing level, it's all decision making monetarily. Who's going to be right and this, that, and the other. Yeah, that's who you know to. Who you know. Honestly. Well, but well, now let's get to this. Let's let's just say it's, uh, it's an opportunist uh, thing for this area to have. That Cleveland and Pittsburgh has taken advantage of. Yeah. They've utilized state tax credits, which is why movies are even coming out of Hollywood. Okay? Because the rest of America has offered 30% back in Ohio. Yeah. So if you spend a million dollars, you're getting $300,000 back. Yeah. Just like that. So yeah. investors are like, all right, let's go. So we went to Louisiana for mine. We are getting for like 40% back. You come here, you're getting 30% back. So the first step was, okay, guys, we're going to have a film commission here. I'm not going to ask you for any money right now. Number one, you're not going to control me. You, you could give a donation at some point. We're a nonprofit. Well, we handle five counties. Yeah. We handle from the lake to the river. Now this so is your business, right? Well, this is the Youngstown Regional Film Commission. Okay. So we started a nonprofit organization that is a Youngstown Town Regional Film Commission. Mm -hmm. And at this point, when, when, when we did this, we had to show our merits to the state of Ohio, mm -hmm. show that we were real, yeah. that we could bring business to Ohio, and we did. We brought a group called Mad Media that brought $380,000 in two weeks. We assisted with two bar rescue shoots downtown. And then we brought over seven projects to come in. Yeah. And I designed a loan program personally with the city of Youngstown. I took a look at incentives that we needed. Uh, and one of them was a financial tool. So I designed a float loan yeah. for movies. Mm -hmm. And the city's like, do you think this will work? I'm like, yeah. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. So they gave me language. We put it in a brochure. So I represented the city of Youngstown and went to California for years. And I uh, would uh, entice producers to come yeah. here based on this loan. And everything was going okay, except uh, once we had our first production, uh, Them That Follow. Yeah. This is a movie that brought uh, Walton Goggins, Jim Gaffigan, uh, uh, Caitlin Denver to town. And it was a originally $2.5 million budget. But they, they borrowed 1.25 from Youngstown's loan program that we created. Yeah. And when they came, the city's like, hey, you want the money? You want the money? Yeah. You can't talk to any third party, including 
Fred in the film commission if you want the money. Oh, they told him that. Oh, yeah. And they said, oh, you could still do business with us, though, when you come. Yeah. So the producers were taken back by this. And they're like, wait a minute. You mean the guy that has been helping us get here for the past year? We don't have to listen to this guy. He's just a volunteer yeah, yeah. that you don't recognize and he doesn't represent you is yeah, what they said. Yeah. Even though I, they do recognize me and I do represent them because mm -hmm. when you give me language to put into our brochure, when we're going to California to sell the loan of Youngstown and I give you my brochure and you say, don't say this, say this instead. Yeah. You've given me language to put in. Yeah. We represent this loan yeah. to say, hey guys, here, come to town. Not only that, but we negotiated the loan with them that followed with the city. Just like that, just okay? like that. Well, so bringing this to, there's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of money on the table. Yeah. Right? yeah so so, that's so what looking at this, yeah. you can see, let's say you're the mayor, right, That's, what, that's what I wanted yeah. to get to okay, real quick, jobs? though. Yeah. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Fred about what, the process, because we're now he's, he's talking about the meat of the topic, but now I want to talk about the process and how... Uh, how his organization would have been able to bring jobs back to the area and, uh, and employ people to, to put money back into the community from around the United States just by having yeah, a big commission. Here. So we'll be right back here in the media. It'll be Brian West. This is the Listen and Learn segment. I'll be right back. Tune in and don't forget to subscribe to Method 8 Inc. YouTube channel. You can also watch free public entertainment. And don't forget to show some support by visiting www.method8inc.com by buying something, clicking something, watching something, or just reading something. You can also sponsor a program as well. That's www.method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Hmm, what does Method8inc.com Media Center have that I need? Small prints, event consulting, photography, business consulting, technical consulting, entertainment consulting, fundraising advice, event videography, movies, news, publishing, media, books, entertainment, acting, broadcasting, public relations, access to the visual and performing arts, ink and black ink refills, audio recording, graphic design, theater, minor computer and cell phone repair, and they're located at 5648 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. every Monday through Friday. The list goes on and on. Method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Oh yeah! And yes, we are chipmunks. <laughs> Tune in every Sunday at 6.30 a.m. to The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West, for the top eight headlines of developing news stories. Or visit the store at 5648 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio. That's method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Oh yeah. All right, we are back. I'm here with Fred D'Amico, and we we're talking about his vision that he had when he came to the area, his still vision for Youngstown Film Commission and bringing films, jobs back to the area. Now, uh, Fred, we were getting into the meat of the topic here. Now, I will say this. Youngstown is labeled as a corrupt city. I agree. I, I have okay. proof, actually. Now, now you're I, mean, saying, I have proof. You're saying that when you came, you wanted to bring business and yeah. you had a vision, yep. you were able to get funding, loans, and then yeah. something, took, built... something took place in the process. Well, let's just say this. When I, when I had the, quote, vision, which is actually a lot of hard work to outline what I was talking about, which was, I'm going to design a film commission here, a film academy here, a collective of all artists of the area here, and a film studio here. So that's four things you got to build. It's called Project Young Hollywood, turning Youngstown into Hollywood and Hollywood onto Youngstown. Yeah. It's a project. It's going to be a project yeah, to try yeah. to turn Youngstown into Hollywood. But here's how we do it. You start with a creative collective of all people in this area that are either camera, hair, makeup, dancers, singers, actors, uh -huh. photographers. You put them in one lump. Now you got your creativity here. Then you start the film commission, which the film commission then lines up all your vendors of the area, all the locations that they can in the area, uh, gets the liaison ship going with all the counties, so cities, the and townships. The well, that's where you, you lay the groundwork with where you're talking to the politicians saying, I'm going to be bringing you business. We're going to be, we're going to need some stuff out of you. Not money right now, but I need is this no permit fees in your city, no, uh, street closure fees, uh, Discounts on off-duty officers for street uh, set security, perhaps. Uh -huh. If you have any vacant office spaces in your cities, we'd like to list those as possible incentives, such as offices for yeah. movie producers. Yeah. You're going to save nine grand, 13 grand on your budget just by coming here, yeah. just because we give you a free office while you're shooting here. Uh -huh. So it was about building incentives 
because we don't have what Cleveland and Pittsburgh have, so to say, we have other things. We have discounts at restaurants, car rentals, hotel stays, okay? We have um, liaison ship, let's say, to open up doors in Columbiana County, Ashtabula, go to the uh, uh, Knoll Bridge. We actually raced across the, the metal Knoll Bridge down there yeah. with a group. Um, what we do is we try to first entice the business to come here. Yeah. And yeah. part of it's by looking at Ohio State's tax credits. We've been trying to fix our state problem because Ohio State, honestly, it sucks. It's bad. Most people in Hollywood don't want to come to Ohio because you can't count on Ohio's tax dollars. Yeah. You could be in the queue yeah. and they could run out on you. Uh -huh. You could have 35 people and Ohio only gives four projects the money for the whole year. Yeah. 44 million. We can get into that later. It's a very intricate thing that most people don't understand. Why fund a film commission in Ohio such as Dayton, Hamilton, uh -huh. Toledo? How many movies go to Dayton, Hamilton that you've heard? But for the past 10 years, they're funded by the bed tax money of their counties and their cities and donations. They're funded every year. Yeah. There's an executive director getting paid and everything else to have that office open when every year our tax credits die out here and movies can't come. But your office is open and you're getting paid, right? Yeah. Yeah. My point was I did not want to have Mahoney County or anyone putting money into a film commission here unless it was viable. Is it viable? Is it capable? of actually happening. Are we able to even have it happen? Yeah. Once I saw the picture, I said, well, we got some holes down at the state level to fix on the tax credit program. Currently, the way it's working, we can still bring movies in, but we need this loan program. So I started looking around at everywhere where I could design something around this loan because the city of Youngstown proved to be criminal and unscrupulous. Okay, they so backdoored he, he, us okay. with our clients, uh, with McNally and these people, and I, I brought the first project, Them That Follows, the name of the movie. And they tried to backdoor us to our clients, defamed us to our clients, who took the money and went to Columbiana County. And I said, wait a minute, guys, you're borrowing Youngstown's money and you're going to Columbiana County. Like, well, we don't have to listen to you, Fred. The city told us. Yeah. So I called the city and I said, I didn't design this loan program so one project could use and abuse it. I said, you better call my producers and tell them to get back up here. So yeah. they did. Yeah. But they made a really bad agreement with them. They negotiated this. They said, um, we want you to shoot in Youngstown. And we want to see a weekly spender, and you're not getting the other so 625 the grand. The oh, yeah. Money. Well, the producers are like, well, listen, Fred showed us a bunch of locations in uh, Columbiana County that fit the look and feel of this movie. Yeah. Yeah, but I also showed them the east side of Youngstown, 32 yeah. locations, yeah. guys. A lot of land. A I said, come land. on, let's get up here. And they said, we don't have to listen to you. I said, yes, you do. Yes, you do. I called the city. I said, you better watch this money, Youngstown. So they told my producers, hey, Fred D'Amico told us that you're doing this. You better come in here. So they make an agreement, shoot in Youngstown and show us a weekly spend and we'll give you the other 625. Producers go, okay. Okay. So they get the money. Yeah. They go back down to Columbiana County. You know what they do? Okay, let's send you, you, and you. Go get a camera. Go up to that. What was that called? Milk, milk, milk yeah, Creek, Creek Park, park yeah. right? Yeah. What the hell? Just go shoot something in that park of theirs. So the producers sent a little skeleton crew. Up to the park for five minutes and action. Cut. Let's go back down to Columbiana like County. That, yeah. Wait a minute. What was the agreement? Shoot in Youngstown, right? Shoot in Youngstown. We did. Here's your weekly spend. So when I came in, when the, the, when the project wrapped up, uh, I came into the city and I said, show me their spend. And they showed me the paperwork. And I looked at it and I said, um, let's say 30,000 gas or 60,000 food or whatever. I said, where? He looked at me. I looked at them. I said, like deer in a headlight. Yeah. I said, you guys are that smart, huh? You asked them, but you didn't ask them where. So all this money was spent in Columbiana County, Boardman, and everywhere but Youngstown. Because you guys thought you could step in front of what we had going on here. Real cute, right? Yeah. So when that ended, the city of Youngstown had another project in their hands by our office called Roadkill McGillicuddy. Yeah. Local girl that lived in New York with a group out of California trying to come home for the loan program. Uh -huh. And the city of Youngstown's economic development director, Sharon Woodbury, really good friends with Tito Brown, I didn't know that, but Sharon Woodbury uh, lies to me, and I have the voice recording to this day. Uh, Fred, on December 11th, we're not doing anything until Tito Brown comes. Now, this girl has been crying to me since August. Yeah. It's a zero-risk loan, by the way. Yeah. 
There's no risk. Like Youngstown is not at any risk for their money whatsoever. Whatsoever. Yeah. It's a backed by a letter of credit. Okay. Irrevocable, standby, callable, do at any time. Letter of credit behind the loan. It's yeah, not a problem. Yeah, but yeah. they backdoored me. Uh -huh. They brought my producers to town. And I filmed that backdoor meeting happening. And I said, I'm done with you guys. I'm done with McNally. I'm going to wait till Tito comes. Thinking Tito was going to actually be yeah, just a man cut right. of a different cloth. Yeah. But I mean, the toilet paper is the toilet paper in this town, bro. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're Charmin yeah. or, or True Value. And he's worse than True Value scratchy stuff, wow. okay? Yeah. This guy is the lowest of the low. Yeah. When he came to office in January, my office already had four projects on his desk. I believe it was Awakening Soul, The Tempering, Unhinged, Roadkill, and I believe there might have been even one more trying to pop in the game all hollywood films all hollywood with budgets at least let's say two million a piece that's 10 million dollars worth of movies we maybe 12 okay back. so with, oh yeah that's it the loan's not even a what do you the fact listen it's like this if i want to borrow ten dollars from you uh -huh. i have to have let's say uh my friend verify that uh i have ten dollars with him uh -huh. okay he's the bank yeah he promises you that when you want your 10 back from me, yeah, yeah. you just call him up. Yeah. He's got the 10, right? You got the 10 for me. Yeah. That's my banker. Yeah. He's going to give you a letter from his financial institution saying, Mr. Yeah. D'Amico is worth 10 bucks. You say, all right, fine. Here you go. You're going to give me your 10. Uh -huh. I'm not going to spend my money. I'm spending your 10 yeah. in your town. Yeah. To make more. So I bring the movie here. Yeah. Let's call it a million dollars. Yeah. I have my million. I'm going to go to Louisiana. Why am I coming here? Yeah. Because here, I give you your million dollars for a year and a half, no interest, no payment. Louisiana, you're going to go spend that million. That's so, it. So this was money so here that, it's, so this could have made the city money. Oh, my God. It makes it city money. It, it made them over 200. It makes them money. It made them money already. So oh, it already absolutely. made the money. So, so, yeah. So, so, you know, it's you a great were, idea. You, you, you understand. The, you were in the process. You had Detroit's Tito. mayor called me. Saying, how are you doing this? And then when you talk to Tito, so that's Tito's whatever. office calls me now in February. And I'm saying, listen, I got to talk to you guys because I have business. But I'm not going to give my producers to Sharon Woodbury in the city of Youngstown until there's some protocol now put in place. You see, after since 2014, now it's 2017. Uh -huh. In three small years, I was able to witness the criminal and unscrupulous behavior of these people yeah and i said no 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 so, so what do you think what protocols do you think real easy protocol if you call my clients you tell me you called my clients yeah okay i was gonna sit down with tito uh -huh. discuss the problems yeah we got business let's talk january comes i know he got inaugurated that's fine whatever he's enjoying he just became mayor goes out and buys a car whatever who cares uh -huh. february comes i get a phone call in the beginning of february hi the mayor would like to meet with your office I said, great let's do it I've been waiting. We got money. And people are calling me. Producers are saying, Fred, what's going on with my project? Yeah. I've been waiting for Tito to call me. It's February. He wants to meet with me tomorrow. Yeah. You know what tomorrow is? Saturday. Uh -huh. I said to his I said to his secretary, I said, excuse me. I go, tomorrow's a Saturday. He wants to meet you at eleven thirty at Buddy's Bar and Grill on the east side of four twenty two. Yeah. It's a bar. Yeah. I get off the phone, I look at my wife, I go, Honey, I go, You're coming with me to this meeting tomorrow. Uh -huh. Something doesn't smell right. I got $12 million on your plate, and this guy wants to meet me at a bar on a Saturday morning? Just like that. Yeah. We get to that meeting. He's sitting in the back, just like when you say crime. Think about the Godfather. Marlon Brando in the back drinking the wine. Huh? This guy's sitting there drinking wine, cutting steak, and eating at 1130 on a Saturday. My wife and I sit down, and we introduce ourselves to Tito. Talk to him about who I am, what I've done already for the city, what we've already done for three years. We're nonprofit listed on the state of Ohio. Yeah, we have business yeah. for you. Yeah. He has another glass of wine. Now we get into the problems I had with Sharon Woodbury, not knowing he went to high school with her, good friends with yeah, her, right? Yeah. Telling him how I need protocols. We've got situations here. In walks two guys. They come in and sit down at the table. It's Bobby Wasco from the Board of Elections, the guy that was on the last failed film commission here with a lady by the name of Barbara Hero oh, with that Richard Orzonian guy, yeah, the Oz guy, right? Yeah. He sits down with this guy I've never met before with this face I just can't get over. It's Jeff Limbian, okay. the yeah, law, director law director for the city yeah, of Youngstown. Well, he's resigned now. Well, yeah, he's resigned now maybe because of what he did. This guy just said, he couldn't wait to say something. He just couldn't wait to say something yeah. the whole time. But he's sitting there. 
sitting there. Couldn't wait to jump in. And Tito leans in after his third glass of wine. So, so now, now no the shit, it's like almost it's about two o'clock. Well, I don't know if it's a wine or he's just getting a little bit more bold. But he leans over and he goes, hey, Fred, where are you from again? I said, well, I from Boardman originally, but when I went to Hollywood and came back home, he goes, I'm a selfish mayor, Fred. I want my boys in your car. I want Youngstown driving that car. Tito don't say that? Yeah, right to me and my wife, and I'm looking at her. And I had to say to him, I said, well, Mr. Mayor, I go, you know, <clears throat> your boys could drive the car sometimes, except Warren's going to drive it. So is Columbiana County. Yeah. So is Ashtabula sometimes. So, so he I go, you can control the film commission. Oh, he wants his boys in my car and Youngstown driving that yeah, car. Pretty much the film commission. Absolutely. The whole thing. Except I had to back him up and say, listen, man. What and he used taxpayer dollars as leverage. Well, well, not even that. It's right. There. Well, yeah, the, the, the float that, that loan. The leverage. Well, the point was is that I told him, I said, not every project I have needs that loan. I was scouting for the Walking Dead, which is like, what, $180 million, yeah. whatever. And I said, they don't need a little $2 million loan from you. Yeah. Not every project needs a loan, Tito. But you could help the whole area by giving these loans so the whole area could see movies in this area. So you're saying your whole goal was to, because you were from the area, this is what you wanted to bring back to the Well, area. I wanted to be with my mom. Yeah. And I thought I was just going to. I, I thought I was just going to produce my own movie here. Yeah. My partner said we're not coming to Youngstown because you have nothing there. Yeah. And I said, all right, I want to shoot in Youngstown. I want to be with my mom, and I want to have a movie right here. Yeah. So in order to make that so that movies could come here, you had to build a database of locations of yeah. equipment and people, so you basically. Get the and everything. Well, who knows how to work on a movie set? Yeah. So I start working with TCTC Trumbull County Technical oh, yeah. College with yeah, Andy yeah, Gray. Yeah. yeah. And I designed a 18-week to 24-week training program uh -huh. where we're going to train 10 different departments. There's many more departments in the movie industry on a, on a yeah, film set. Yeah, there's a lot well, let's just say we're going to do uh, production world. We're going to do hair, makeup, art department, grip, lighting, uh -huh. maybe locations. Uh, maybe we'll do some uh, AD department here. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know. Whatever all, else you want. But I'm not trying money. to get into post right now. Yeah. What we do is we would hire in union people from Cleveland and Pittsburgh to come to Youngstown. Yeah. Pay them to train us. Yeah. And my idea was once you start working with a union man or woman, and there's you're a student here in Youngstown. Yeah. yeah. When the Youngstown Regional Film Commission has a movie coming that needs union people. Yeah. We call the union out of Cleveland, which is the the governs, so yeah. you have to call 209. Yeah. But if 209 is busy because Cleveland yeah. is doing a movie and Cincinnati is doing a movie, then you don't have enough union people, so yeah. you need people. And they're allowed to do what's called a day player, yeah. which means local Youngstown people could get hired on a union movie if you just would have worked a little bit and got a certificate of completion from our training, the union would have given you the right to day play. It's funny that you mentioned that. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Fred about the recipe that he's talking about, how they're using it to create Voltage Valley. We'll be right back here in the media. It'll be Brian West in Listen, Learn, Say. I'll be right back. Tune in and don't forget to subscribe to Method 8 Inc. YouTube channel. You can also watch free public entertainment. And don't forget to show some support by visiting www.method8inc.com by buying something, clicking something, watching something, or just reading something. You can also sponsor a program as well. That's www.method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Hmm, what does Method8Inc.com Media Center have that I need? Small prints, event consulting, photography, business consulting, technical consulting, entertainment consulting, fundraising advice, event videography, movies, news, publishing, media, books, entertainment, acting, broadcasting, public relations, access to the visual and performing arts, ink and black ink refills, audio recording, graphic design, theater, minor computer and cell phone repair, and they're located at 5648 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. every Monday through Friday. The list goes on and on. Method8Inc.com. Buy stuff. Watch stuff or read stuff. Oh yeah! And yes, we are chipmunks. <laughs> Tune in every Sunday at 6.30 a.m. to The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West, for the top eight headlines of developing news stories. Or visit the store at 5648 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio. It's Method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Oh yeah. Thank <laughs> you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here here in the Listen and Learn segment in the media. I got uh, my guest friend D'Amico on. So we, before we went uh, to before we went to break, we were getting into the jizz of the matter. OK, so now Fred is back in Youngstown. He is considered the outcast now dealing with uh, the mayor, the political system, the structure of, of a place that people have been known across who have been here ha have been victims of. So Fred is now the outcast. So now he's telling us about uh, what is actually taking place and then uh, what actually happened after he stepped away from the platform and then they moved in with Voltage Valley. Now the vision for this is how Hollywood kind of acts itself out of the picture. So now the vision is Voltage Valley, jobs, electric vehicles. So that's where we are now on the timeline. And I'm, I'm going to call it right now, and you can pay me $100 later. I'm going to bet you 100 bucks that Voltage Valley is just as big as Tim Ryan's tech belt. Ah. You think that's what happened? Oh, my God. Timmy Ryan should be behind Voltage Valley. Put the same hot air guy out there talking yeah. the same bullshit. Here's the deal. Youngstown, you're never going to have anything here. Never going to have anything here. That's going to keep your youth and make this housing market what you want it to be and have this area be a city like you want to live in, like Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Miami, Columbus, anywhere that's thriving and thriving, yeah. not just surviving. Now, Voltage Valley, your daughter, she's getting a job out there, huh? No, your no. son's going to be getting a job out of Voltage Valley, maybe? That's the way we're going to push our kids into Voltage Valley. From this area, we're going to be Voltage Valley guys. We're going to build batteries and cars. We don't want to. Now what? So, so you, how about that you, one? You, you want you want the plan. Sexy industry is what and, Hollywood and this is, is man. What you, this is what you've been <laughs> into your entire life. Like you said, you've got a pretty I good portfolio. This. You've yep. seen it. You've seen what it does to young folks. I'm a Youngstown guy. I, I I'm not a movie guy, right? That's what you yeah, you come from, yeah. Youngstown. But when you get out there, and you realize that industry, and you know that. What All it can it, do. What it can do and not what you, more importantly, what you could do when you're out of Youngstown mentality. Yeah. When you come back here and you start bringing this up, movies. Oh, no, we've heard this before. Well, it's not my fault you failed and you gave county money and failed. Yeah. Or better yet, uh, why do I care about bringing other movies home? I want to make my own movies here. Yeah. Well, that's the other mentality that you have by people like Boom Boom and other local producer, writer, directors is what you find in this town. You're a writer, director, uh, writer. Producer, director, right? Yeah. So you're your own show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good for you. So, so do so, yourself. So, but here's the question, Mr. Writer, Director, Producer in Youngstown. When you're doing a local, the worst Christmas movie ever or Body Bag, the big TV show, Youngstown, yeah, yeah. Mafia Ties, sorry, yeah, right? Whatever. Yeah. I don't mean to dog it, but when you don't have a dollar to pay people, yeah, Whether it's yeah, locations, yeah, yeah. you don't have any insurance in case somebody gets hurt on no, your this set. Is business. This, this is, is business. called business, and it's also called why the Youngstown Regional Film Commission is trying to establish the 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 reality of we get it inside of Hollywood. You have people shooting movies all day long all over Hollywood, but then you have movie sets that are closed sets with functioning uh, uh, budgets too. Yeah, you have people trying to get whatever they could get, however they could get it. You got to put it together, a bunch of friends with a camera and some editing gear, go do it on your phones. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Do it all you want. But don't try to stop what we're doing, which is bringing Hollywood home. Yeah. It might steal the limelight from some local producer, writer, directors, and that's yeah. what the problem is. You're now, not getting a job when I bring Hollywood home if you're a writer, director, producer. Now, well, Remember, well, we already have those well, set. Now, we're talking... Now, uh, it's hard to explain Just to get people way. to understand <clears throat> the, the structure now, you have, you have studios... In Hollywood, now you have other studios trying to com either compete or get business from Hollywood. You have Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta. Okay, let's let's be clear about studios. Yeah. When I say studios, there's studios that you, you think of that are like Warner Brothers and Paramount. Yeah. Okay. But then you have then you the have business. Independent. Like I made my movie. Like go get me five movies off yeah. this shelf right here, and I'll show you which ones are independent, yeah. which ones are where, studio where I'm made. At, I'm in the independent. Well, independence five million yeah. dollars even. Okay. Ten yeah. million dollars is still independent. So, so a million the, the, dollars the purpose, is independent. The purpose of that topic was to say why why does Youngstown need Hollywood? Why does why does well, why does Ohio why. Ready, need Hollywood? Ready, ready. It's not even just about Ohio. It's about Youngstown needing an industry. Yeah. And not just an industry, because remember, the oil and gas industry was going to come. Like I said, Timmy Ryan's tech belt. I see, I see. My I see, God. I see. You need something that's going to actually keep your youth here and incite and you enough know, people. You know that the arts will do Yes. Yeah, so are you kidding me? This film industry is so amazing that 
it's business. It doesn't matter if you're a uh, Republican or a Democrat, if you're a liberal or whatever, you're conservative. It's for the everybody. The point being is, if you're a businessman, then get on the business side of movie making. Yeah. Okay, if you're, uh, if you're an actor, then you're acting. If you're a writer, then you're writing. If you want to do hair and makeup out at Raphael's, do it, it on a movie set for Madonna instead. And it brings you know business. I mean? a, and now, no, we, 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 when you just, talk about, a, you talk about, world. you, you it, it's, it's not even, it's not even political because Ronald Reagan was an actor. Sure. So he was a part of the Republican Party. Schwarzenegger. Uh, now, now John F. Kennedy was the one who introduced most of the arts to you know. So 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 you're looking. Arts are great, but I'm not. Saying, I'm not trying to say I'm a bleeding heart. I'm saying economically. Economically. Seven hundred million yeah. dollars in past ten years up in Cleveland and Pittsburgh with the movie industry. And, that could be here. and Youngstown, <laughs> almost next to zero. Besides what we brought in. What I'm saying is, for fifty mile difference, people, what does it take to bring it right home? It took what you I did. You have land. It took what I did. Yeah. We had to design an avenue to bring movies in. And that was building incentives, databasing, creating a website, creating a community where when a producer says, Fred, do you have any places for us to stay? Right there. Where, where's your uh, grips? Where's your grip equipment? Where's your donate? Now we have a database for you. Uh -huh. Now we have something for you to come on in town. We pick you up from the airport. We bring you back. You got a hotel for staying in for free for the couple of days you're here to scout. Yeah. We fixed it up so we're going to bring you in and you're going to say, you know what? I want to bring my movie to Youngstown, Ohio. Not just Youngstown. Youngstown region. Okay? It, it, You've got to do the region, what, kid. Just do I, Youngstown. I, now, what I've got out of this interview, Fred, is it sounds like you were very schooled on the business aspect of Hollywood. And you know what it could do economically yeah, to and a then, system. Yeah, not even, yeah, and, and, and I got schooled by building a film commission to learn what the economic development, job creation, and, and, and retention of businesses and youth that come with this industry. Yeah. The retention of the fact of the matter that when you pop up and say, we're going to be having movies here, people are like, Mom, why am I going to go? Why am yeah. I leaving to go to yeah. New York again if we're going to have, if we're really getting movies here, Mom? Why am I going to Miami or Los Angeles? If I had a line out the door, which I did, yeah. and you could see auditions happening all the time here, yeah. what are you driving to Pittsburgh and Cleveland for? I got your movies right here, guys. Now, now why, Which is then back yeah. up. I'm a SAG actor. Yeah. yeah. Now, why so in you, order to bring movies home, yeah. one day I could just wake up and just go audition right here in town. Now, why, why, do, why, <laughs> That's my why goal. Do you need, why do you need the political structure? Do you need it for the permits? Do you need it for... Well, well tell, tell us why you need let's it. just say they don't have a choice anymore for a minute. I'm going to take all poli political power away from them. They're going to do what I tell them and what I ask them to do. And that's it. That's all. And guess what? It's no skin off their back. I'm not taking anything from them. It's no risk to you. You're just going to cooperate with me when I ask you for things. That's yeah, it. Yeah. You're not going to say no to me. You're going to say yes to everything I ask of you. Yeah. And what you're going to get in return is this. Just sit down, Traffic Candy, Ditzler, Remedio, Tito Brown. And just listen. And watch. And say yes when I ask you for something. Watch. We need to get a uh, list of all city locations that are vacant that we could possibly use whether it's vacant lots office spaces or whatever can we have a list please yes thank you very much uh we'd like to have uh incentives such as the float loan can we use the float loan if, if it's back with a letter of credit yes and you have thank you very much back. yeah absolutely so the answer is yes again okay great youngstown now i don't need you for anything else right now I just, just needed you for the work. loan. Yeah. Because in, 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 when I need a cornfield, I go to Canfield. Right there, yeah. Canfield will help me get the cornfield. I don't need you, Youngstown. When I need the, the lake, so it looks like an ocean, I'm going to Astabula. I don't yeah. need you, Youngstown. Stay in your seat until I ask something out of you. Yeah. Hey, they need a housing for their production home. Do you guys have some office space at Federal Plaza down there? Yeah, yeah. You got a little office space available in that 20, yeah. 20 Federal? We're yeah, putting all that money into yeah, it's just vacant. See, so we're gonna. You got some office space you could give them. Yeah, thank you. But not just you, Tito. How about Doug Franklin? How about Peter Wilson of Lisbon? The whole region we ask, and it's called. And I put it together because the Anthony Traffic Candy actually set me up. He said, "Hey, Fred, if you don't want money from us, what are you asking out of us? Put it in writing." So I did. It's called the proposed regional incentives. Yeah. Proposed meaning. It starts in a red lettering. It says, these are proposals only. Please pick one, some, none, or all of these, and let us know what you can offer movies when they come. It's no skin off your back. It's no money. 
It's perhaps like this. If you come to Mahoning County, we'll give you 0.5% back on your local spend. Okay, that's one thing. So here's what I did. I spent two and a half months of my life researching all over the United States. What does this county over here in Texas offer movies? What does San Francisco offer movie making? What does Iowa offer? So I gathered the whole United States as to what this person, these people offer, these counties offer producers. And I slammed it into a document. I said, here, tell me what you can offer. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What'd they do instead? They took my document, gave it to the prosecuting attorney for the county, Paul Gaines. Had Paul Gaines fabricate a letter saying, it's illegal what you're asking, cease and desist. And then told everybody, uh, Mr. D'Amico got a letter from us, illegal, cease and desist letter. So when I called and asked him, so they, 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 they pushed me out by this, trying to say that I was asking illegal. So I called the prosecuting attorney and said, what is illegal? And okay. Gina Bricker, well, Gina DiGenova, who's currently your prosecutor of the county, she says to me, it's illegal to fund a film commission from bed tax. Stop asking. And yeah. I said to her, if it's illegal, then Anthony Traficani needs to be wearing an orange jumpsuit right now. He's still the sitting commissioner who funded the last film commission from the county bed tax in 2004. So, you're so it was a lie. So, so you're yeah. a fight as, as we get. Across they the just wanted to control me. Uh, That's uh, the fight. This, okay. Okay. So. There's I'm nothing seeing, else I'm to seeing, it. I'm, yeah. seeing, I, I, I'm seeing all these, just being in this community for, I've, I've served this community business-wise for about over 16 years now. I came back. So to end this, conclude this, this interview, your fight has been what it is from day one. Even though, even though they- Way they, back then, yeah, you're right. Yeah, from day one almost. Now here, let's say Tito in 2018 comes and I have all these projects on his desk. And you just want... And, and he wants to be, I want my boys in your car and I want Youngstown driving that car. He said those words to me. I'm a selfish mayor. And not only that, but then there's some stuff happened. But in the end of May, I get a phone call from Bob Wasco on the Board of Elections, the guy that was on the last failed film commission with Traffic Candy and these guys. He calls and says, Fred, now I had a $3 million movie called The Tempering that was trying to come in the door and he needed a float loan and Julius Oliver sat on his ass with Lauren McNally and wouldn't lift a finger because Julius was worried about getting reelected in November. I said, Julius, this guy needs a float loan. He's like, yeah, well, I can't, you know, nobody, Tito doesn't listen to us. Tito wasn't listening to anyone in council when he first got in. And these guys were too worried about their own careers. They didn't, they lost a $3 million project for Youngstown. It was called The Tempering. And I get a phone call from Bob Wasco in May, June. He says, I just got done talking to the law director um, and the mayor. Libyan at the time. Yeah, Libyan. Libyan, yeah. A horrible man. I actually have him recorded calling me a smug prick. And I got him on record of this, so too. Are, oh, these totally are recorded, true too. Colors you're saying, oh, true out. colors. This guy's a bad guy. He fabricates letters, and I actually have his fabricated letters. I've had to turn him into some, some organizations right now. But at this point, Tito has Bob Wasco call me at the end of May, and he says to me, Fred, just got done talking to the mayor and law director, okay? And uh, we're, uh, we're talking, and uh, they want your business, Fred, okay? I said, good, let's do business, Bob, because I had the tempering. Yeah. Except they don't want you. See, we were throwing some names around, and a friend of ours came up, Barbara Hero. They want you to hand your business to Barbara, Fred, and give it to her and let her bring it into the city. You want movies here, don't you, Fred? And I said to Bob, I said, Bob, you know, I'm so sick of Youngstown and Mahoney County then I'm willing to train Barbara on what I need out of just Youngstown and Mahoney, but I don't need her in Ashtabula, Portage, Trumbull, or Columbia County. Yeah, Got it? Yeah, I'll right. train her on Youngstown only. And he said, no, Fred, you're going to hand her your business and you're going to step far, far away. And if you don't, yeah, and if I don't what, Bob? I'm going to block your calls and not let anything get done. What do you think about that? Just like that. I think that's extortion, Bob. So, what it, so, so it's extortion that happened to me. So, so as we as we conclude, <laughs> if you don't give me your business, we're gonna block we, everything we, you do. As we conclude, you you think just like everybody that regime change is is is, is better. And, uh, and you got twenty four years. This guy's been sitting in a four year seat. Yeah. All right. He's so, unscrupulous. So man, I, I, I'll ask Fred you know, any last comments you want to give to the. Yeah, it, it was so easy. Uh, everyone fought me in the beginning and I, I actually, I can't believe 
how simple it really was when I when I put it together. Yeah. Once I got that loan together and I got the, the whole vision, I went to Hollywood. We had a line out the door. It was working. Okay. We were listed yeah. on the state level. We brought down. eight Youngstown, just so you know. Go on Google and type in Them That Follow. And just know that this is a movie that borrowed 1.25 from your city in 2017. It filmed here, and it won the top 10 of Sundance, guys, with Youngstown in the back end credits. Top 10 of Sundance. And the money was due back in March of 2019, but your city, even though they borrowed the money went to Columbiana County, your city gave them six more months on that money, no interest, no payment, when the money was due back. And that project, that when they were here in 17, went to Columbiana and spent the money. It was due back in 2019, March. Facts. Why did they give them six more months for free? You know why? Tito Brown, Jeff Limbian, and Mike Ray, Barbara Hero, Sharon Woodbury, had an idea and a plan. Let's push Fred out of the way. Let's call ourselves the Youngstown Film Office. Just like that. And, and here's what we'll do. We'll have a premiere party for the movie that Fred brought at the Warner Brothers Theater. Next year, the so now I've got a letter from Jeff Limbian in my pocket that says, Mr. D'Amico, if you try to interfere with the now sanctioned Youngstown Film Office's plan. Yeah. Now remember, we're the Youngstown Regional Film Commission. Uh -huh. They're going to try to call themselves the Youngstown Film Office. Just like and that. they're going to have a plan to host a premiere party at the Warner Brothers Theater. And if you try to interfere with our plans to host a premiere party for the movie that you brought to town, you will be held accountable. And here's what they didn't know. When I first started this in 2013, actually, when I started drawing up the Project Young Hollywood 20-page proposal and all this yeah. stuff, I remember I was dating my wife now, but she was my girlfriend at the time. I said, hey, babe, I'm going to start a film commission here. I'm going to become a success one day. And they're going to try to take it from me. And then I'm going to get mad, but I want you to remind me that I want them to have a sustainable film commission here, but not until they're ready. And she's like, what are you talking about? I go, I, I don't know. This, this just came to me. Yeah. Things come to me. Yeah. And so what I did is I bought a bunch of names to brand protect. Yeah. Youngstown Regional Film Commission, uh -huh. filmyoungstown.com, and also youngstownfilmoffice.com. I bought this name a long time ago, and these idiots didn't even check. And they came out and said, and lied to the state of Ohio too, by the way, claiming to be, hi, we're the Youngstown Film Office with Barbara Hero and Sharon Woodbury and Tito Brown. Just like that. Except I own youngstownfilmoffice.com. And now you're going to host a premiere party under a fake name for my movie I brought through my organization? I put a stop to it. That's why, if you noticed, you didn't see a premiere party of them that follow. It's because the producers were afraid to backdoor us because they knew that I owned that name and then I bought their name too. I said, you're not going to do this to us. I bought them that follow dot com. Well, you, you it's, heard it's it. tough. You got to fight Youngstown you, you, when the Youngstown's you fighting it, you. You Trust heard me. it from Fred D'Amico himself. Uh, I hope to one day bring you back on the well, show. Listen, as did, you, I know it? we have to wrap, yeah. but I could tell you how we could stay in touch on this. I bought Youngstown Film Office dot com. Yeah. I bought them that follow dot com to yeah. tell the truth. Yeah. But most importantly, when Tito Brown extorted me for my business, stopped your opportunities, and stopped your chances yeah. to actually have movies here, yeah. the economic development, jobs, and everything you're talking yeah. about, guys, yeah. I bought TitoBrown.com. Okay. So, so I, bought, I bought TitoBrown.com, and this is to be not, and I feel bad for him just a, just a little bit, but it's not all about Tito. Don't get your head that big, T. Uh, what it is, it's TitoBrown.com was like the straw that broke the camel's back for all unscrupulous and corrupt politicians in our town will be listed and are listed currently on TitoBrown.com. Jeff like Limbian, Anthony Traficani, Mike Ray, the list will go on. Sharon Woodbury, Sarah Lone, the people that have hindered, blocked, stopped, hurt, defamed yeah. me, the organization, your chances to have movies here will be exposed. And all I can say is this, we're working on a remedy here, people. We really are. Because there's no reason why you can't have movies here. It's real simple, except for we have an email saying, Youngstown is blocking the Youngstown Regional Film Commission and any of our clients from borrowing your money. So that means even if I had a guy that wants to bring you a movie, yeah. Tito said, we don't want your business. Just like that. 
unless he takes it. Well, I want to thank Fred for yeah. coming on. I want to Sorry. Thank you guys. Now, you're all right. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm pretty sure he'll be back as, as time goes on and he's, he continues on with his plan to get uh, his business going, especially if they have a regime change. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to the media regime this week. Change, yeah. our, 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 our Listen and Learn segment with Fred D'Amico. This was titled, What Hollywood Could Do for You and Your City and When You Have Guys Like Fred Who Have Vision for Such Things. Yes. I want to thank you for tuning in. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the media. Me, Brian West. Thanks a lot. Never Bye. grease the wheel. <laughs> Because it doesn't matter. Even if you did, they'd still screw you <laughs> over. Peace. <laughs> Have no fear, fellow citizens. The media is here.